Hello, warm welcome to this talk. Now, of course, many of us hope for fairly rapid changes in the United States with the new administration. For example, looking at uh, COVID vaccines and all the dangers associated with them. Things are starting to move, but really quite slowly. And let's illustrate that now. And we'll also be looking at some of the things that aren't said in this paper I'm about to talk about. Now, this is the paper we're going to talk about here. FDA approved required updated warning and labelling. And that is from uh, this paper here, from the uh, US Food and Drug Administration. Now, these are uh, what the FDA is saying, that the manufacturers must give warnings about the side effects of myocarditis and pericarditis, and they give some data. Now, to be fair, uh, this paper doesn't mention uh, blood clotting, thrombosis and thrombocytopenia. It doesn't mention uh, postural orthostatic tachycardic syndrome, leg amputations. We saw Alex... Tragically, he had his leg amputated. Doesn't mention small fibre neuropathy. Doesn't mention the constant pain that Brianne Dressing's in. Doesn't mention the transverse myelitis that we interviewed Michael with last week. Persistent fatigue syndrome, immune disorders, guillain barre syndrome, Bell's palsy. Seizures, allergy and anaphylaxis, new onset of autoimmune disease, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune hepatitis. Reproductive and menstrual irregularities, infertility, uh, doesn't mention long vaccine syndrome, multiple inflammatory syndrome, multisystem inflammatory syndrome in children, death and potential cancers. And that's just a list I sort of sketched out that took a few minutes. Uh, doesn't mention any of those. It's talking about myocarditis. So let's let's stick to what the paper says. Um, check it out for yourself. That's all the information. Now, mRNA shots, um, uh, th there's also a vid video here from this guy uh, from the FDA whose name escapes him. What's his name again? Um, I have, I've been watching him. Vinny Prasad, he, he's been a YouTuber for a long time. He's made this, but he's now speaking for the, the FDA. So um, now he, th this paper here uh, requiring manufacturers to include more safety information in the data that they are giving. Um, so for people aged six months through to 64 years, approximately 8.4 cases of inflammatory heart disease per million. So it doesn't sound too many, really, um, too many for, for what I'd like, of course, but 8.4 per million. But the trouble is they've been talking about whole population numbers rather than those at particular risk and that means that people of very high risk categories have been getting these COVID shots completely inappropriately and I would say uh, unethically. Uh, and I'll give evidence for that or my thinking for that in a minute. Initial, uh, initial and follow-up cardiac MRIs, magnetic resonance imaging, detailed imaging of the heart, commonly showed signs of uh, injury to the heart muscle. Now, the thing about heart muscle is once a... Once the heart muscle cell has, uh, has died, it won't recover. These cells don't recover. So, for example, if you lose some cells on the inside of your cheek or some liver cells, they'll just recover. But muscle cells don't. Same as brain cells don't effectively divide. Well, there is some division, but not healing division. That's why dementia is irreversible. Um, so, so is damage to the heart muscle. Um, males 20, 12 through to 24 years, approximately... 26.9 cases, and that gives one in 37,000. Now, that's, of course, way worse when you look at this particular demographic. Um, but the point is, this is not telling the whole story by any means. And it's not explaining why they didn't act much, much quicker. Let, let me show you what I mean. So, for example, February 2021, basically as soon as the vaccine was rolled out, there's information. Uh, indicated that there was cases of CVAM. Now, this is this is a new appalling acronym: coronavirus, uh, coronavirus vaccine associated myocarditis. CVAM is what they're now calling this. Appalling, but that's in the journals now. April 2021, there was two deaths and 60 cases from Israel, and the details were sent to the FDA and CDC in April 2021. So they did know in, they knew there was a marker from February 2021 and for sure by April 2021. And if the Israeli authorities were considerate enough to form the US authorities, we can assume they were uh, 
polite enough to inform the UK, Canadian, Canadian um, Australian, Kiwi, um, all, 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 all would be informed, we would assume. Anyway, let's carry on with this story. 27th of April 2021, CDC statement denies myocarditis signal. But they knew from their own data from February 2021 and they knew from Israeli data from April 2021 that it did exist, but in 27th of April, they flat denied it. Um, what do you call it if someone says something that they know isn't true? 27th of April 2021, uh, CDC was aware of 14 cases reported by the US military. So they knew from the US military there was cases, they knew from Israel there was cases, and they knew from their own VERS, VERS data. So three lines of evidence, their own VERS data, the Israeli data, and the military data, uh, saying there's myocarditis, but they denied it in, in that same month, April, at the end of April 2021. August 2021, FDA documents from a Freedom of Information request actually indicated it wasn't one in 37,500, it was actually one in 5,000 in 16 and 17-year-olds. Appallingly high, dangerously high. And of course, this is just the, uh, the severe cases. We, we know that there's raised troponins in huge more numbers of uh, cases. Um, Hong Kong data, it was one in 2,700, so even more common in 13 to 18 year olds. And yet the CDC were failing to admit this by April, 27th of April 2021. Um, freedom of information requests, why were they required? Why wasn't the data freely given? Hong Kong data, as we say, even more common. Uh, vaccine safety link data, um, one in 2,000. After the second dose in 18 to 24 year olds, males. So one in 2000, this is downright dangerous. And uh, the vaccine safety link data also said that 64% of cases were missed. So most cases were simply uh, missed. Now, the follow up on this is really quite concerning. And of course, this is only talking about myocarditis and pericarditis. Not this long list of other vaccine complications that we brainstormed uh, before. Um, Follow-up information on cardiovascular outcomes from longitudinal perspective observational studies. Now, this is largely based on this and partly based on the talk by Vinny Prasad, who now represents the, uh, the FDA. Um, most had received two-dose primary series prior to diagnosis, so this is mostly after the second dose. Follow-up of approximately five months. Persistent abnormal cardiac uh, magnetic resonance imaging, <coughs> CMRs. So detailed scans of the heart show that this was persistent. The myocardial damage was persistent. Uh, that are a marker for myocarditis in uh, 6% of patients. So 6% of patients after five months still visible on the uh, MRI. Now, the term now being used by the FDA is latent uh, gadolinium enhancement. So gadolinium is, is the, um, the contrast medium that they'll inject that highlights the damage area of the myocardium on MRI. So if you've got gadolinium enhancement, that's a marker for myocardial injury. And uh, in Australian data, for example, at six months, 67% of people with 67% uh, uh, of people complaining. So 67% of people that initially presented with myocarditis uh, still had LGE, latent gadolinium enhancement, five months after and 35% were showing fibrosis. And the fibrosis, of course, will never recover. And you would imagine that most of these will go on to develop fibrosis because if the heart muscle is dead, the only way it can cure that area of the body, it doesn't cure it, but the only way it can, it can rectify the situation is to make a fibrous patch. At least that means it doesn't leak, but the fibrous patch will never be contractile. Now, vast majority of cases were men, 92% were men. And 72% uh, seem to carry on with persistent. And of course, this is not 
accounting for the spontaneous cardiac death syndromes that we saw with people lying on sports field and things like that because of the myocarditis. If there's myocarditis, we know that predisposes to cardiac arrest, ventricular fibrillation, where the heart muscle just does that and there's no effective cardiac output. This is not that. These people, that they, they died before they got onto the, the system. These people with a persistent myocardial damage, yes, they could get a ventricular fibrillation, but they could also go on and develop heart failure, where the myocardium is unable to generate sufficient contractile output to meet the metabolic demands of the body. Uh, clinical and prognostic significance of the CMR findings is not known according to the FDA. Uh, I think it is known that to, to some extent. I think they're being a bit, uh, bit cautious here, a bit non-revealing here. So this LGE uh, from the FDA video that we talked about from slides, uh, based on data from multiple studies, associated with increased future cardiac events and mortality. Cardiac events could be Cardiac arrests could be heart failure, could be failure of valves, could be ongoing pain. So basically we see that this is common, uh, affecting, well, it depends on the study you want to take. Um, vaccine safety link data, one in 2000. Hong Kong data, one in 2700. You know, this is so dangerous, the vaccine should be absolutely banned in these age groups. But of course, because of all the other side effects, now the risks, in my view, massively outweigh the potential uh, benefits. Just a few other points briefly from this study. Um, so it, it's, it's to inform public and healthcare providers. Uh, and the FDA is now required, uh, has required and approved update to the prescribing information for the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine. This is all in the paper. You can uh, you can read that for yourself. Um, so they have to put in the incidence of myocardial damage. Um, they have to put in the uh, the results of the study. The study, the main study they're talking about, was the FDA funded study, which was uh, this one, um, which again showed the evidence for the myocardial damage. And of course, we also know from videos that we've done with people like Nick Hushler, who, who um, did data on the uh, studies on the post-mortem findings, uh, people that died of acute cardiac disease often had spike protein in the lesions. We've looked at that before as well. Um, so... The study, the FDA is based on inpatient and outpatient data. Um, estimated and adjusted incidence of myocarditis and pericarditis has to be declared, but it's only one through seven days. So if the myocarditis occurred after that, it wouldn't uh, flag up. And it's only on the 2023-2024 data. Uh, that's the study they're talking about there that we've just shown. Follow-up was only on 300 people. I'm sure the United States FDAs can do better than that. Um, some people in the study reported having heart symptoms approximately three months after developing myocarditis, and we saw some definitely at five months. But the point is, for a proportion of these, the, 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 well, for all of these, the heart damage is not going to get better. You know, three years, five years, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, the question is, how is it going to deteriorate is the issue and finally that is the link for the uh, the Vinny Prasad video which is good so basically good that the FDA has paid for the study good that the FDA is insisting on more safety data to be made public uh, both to health professionals and to the general public um, bad that the way this paper talks about myocarditis, it's ignoring all these other long list of adverse reactions. And this was just a brainstorm. If I went to the literature, I'm sure I could find a, a hundred more. So clearly these products should be banned until proven safe. And I don't see how they ever could be proven safe because they're not. Unless the technology dramatically 
changes. So FDA marks out of 10. Yeah. Under Biden, it was probably zero or negative. This it's some attempt, you know, I'll give them three or four out of 10, maybe three out of 10, but they could do much better and uh, give us more data and be more forthright. And this needs to feed through into the commissioning purchasing cycle of these products. It needs to feed through into all the new mRNA factories that are being built around the world that need to be suspended until a particular technology is proven safe. The FDA are going to insist on more RCTs in future, uh, randomised controlled trials, but personally I would think that these products are so dangerous it's unethical to recruit to them. So slight improvements, not as fast as we would like. Let's hope for acceleration. And we look to the uh, FDA for um, c continued enhanced realism in the future. But for now, thank you for watching.